This is a Hall Effect magnetic sensor. It has three pins, power, ground, and data. The part number for this component is A1120, and it comes in three different packages. The description in the datasheet gives a good overview of what this component does, but I find the functional block diagram gives a better visual representation of how the sensor continually samples and outputs data. Page 3 of the datasheet shows the different maximum ratings as well as the pinout for the different sensor packages. Page 5 of the datasheet gets into the details of what it takes to turn the sensor on. Each of the A1120 rows shows the min and max magnetic field density measured in Gauss units for switching the sensor on and off. And if we skip to page 12 of the datasheet, you can see the manufacturer has kindly given us an example circuit to use with two graphs that show us what the output will look like when the sensor switches on or off. So the basic operation of this sensor is that if we power up the sensor at plus 5 volt, we should expect a plus 5 volt signal output when little to no magnetic field density is detected. But if the density increases enough, the sensor will turn on, pulling the output to 0 volt ground. With this functional and application information, let's build a system that shows us the status of the sensor by turning an LED on if the sensor detects a magnetic field and off when no magnetic field is detected. The hardware schematic for this system will have one input from the Hall Effect sensor and one output going to an LED. If we start the hardware schematic from scratch, the core of the schematic is the Arduino Nano with its plus 5 volt and ground lines connected to the breadboard's bus lines. The Hall Effect sensor's output pin connects to digital pin 2, its power pin connects to plus 5 volts, and its ground pin to ground. The sensor's output is also pulled up to plus 5 volt with a 10 kilo ohm resistor. Digital pin 3 will connect to a 470 ohm resistor, which connects to an LED that goes to ground. And that completes the hardware schematic. For the software side, things are just as simple. First, in the Arduino IDE, we declare the Hall Effect sensor pin as digital pin 2, and the LED pin as digital pin 3. Then we initialize a Hall state variable that will hold the current state of the sensor. In the setup function, we set the Hall Effect sensor pin as an input, and the LED pin as an output. In the loop function, we read the sensor state and store that information in the Hall state variable. Then we use a conditional if-else statement. If the sensor is switched on, we turn the LED on. Otherwise, the sensor is switched off, so turn the LED off. And remember, the sensor outputs a logic zero or low when it detects a nearby magnetic field. That's why the if statement looks for a low. And that completes the program for this lesson. Go ahead and compile it, upload it to your Arduino Nano, and then move on to build the experiment. To build the circuit, we'll need an Introduction to Sensors Components Kit, a breadboard, and a jumper wire kit. The parts from the Components Kit that we will use are the Arduino Nano, the Hall Effect Magnetic Sensor, a 10 kilo ohm resistor, a 470 ohm resistor, and a red LED. To build the circuit, place the Arduino Nano into the breadboard, the plus 5 volt and ground from the Arduino Nano connect to the breadboard bus lines, Digital pin 3 connects to a 470 ohm resistor that connects to an LED going to ground. The Hall Effect sensor connects to digital pin 2 plus 5 volt power and ground. And then a 10 kilo ohm resistor pulls the output pin of the Hall Effect sensor to plus 5 volt power. And that completes the hardware construction of the experiment. So plug in the USB cable to power up the experiment and let's see how it works. First, you'll notice that polarity does matter. Only one side of the magnet will affect one side of the sensor. Second, as I move the magnet back and forth, you can see the range of the sensor when used with this small but powerful magnet. And as you can see, using the LED for visual feedback gives you a good feeling for how this sensor works and what its limitations are with this specific magnet. One application of magnetic sensors comes in the form of feedback for motors. For example, if I attach the magnet to a motor shaft, or a pen in this case, when the motor shaft spins, the magnetic sensor can detect each rotation and therefore count the RPM.
In the real world, Hall effect sensors have many applications. One such application is in tracking the rotations per minute of spinning objects such as wheels, power tools, or centrifuges. Another common usage of Hall effect sensors is in mechanical setups where a home location or limit location must be detected. This spinning POV uses a magnetic sensor to know when it has reached the home location and that it should start to display the LED pattern again. All parts in this online course were provided by the Gadgetory. Visit them at gadgetory.com slash pyroedu. Thank you for following this Introduction to Sensors course. We hope you learned a lot and encourage you to follow all of our courses at pyroelectro.com slash edu.